Thank you very much for speaking to us here on ANN7. Tell us a bit about what you're here been like so far. It's only February, but uh, you seem very busy in training. Yeah, you know, we've had a, a big winter program right through November and December. I was here in Potch training really hard, putting in the base work. Um, we've been moving over a little bit to speed as I'm going to the indoors um, in a couple of weeks' time to do a couple of indoor races. Uh, 2014 was a very big year for you. What is, were some of your successes and things that you're hoping to replicate in this 2015? 14, very good year for me. It was a busy year. We started off early with indoors. Um, I ran a pretty good race in Birmingham, my first indoor race, and then, of course, went to the World Indoors, where I came fourth. Um, we carried that on all the way to Commonwealth Games. Um, I got a bronze medal there, which I was very happy for. It was uh, one of our main goals for the year. And yeah, um, and trying to just maintain that and take that over to 2015. What has been the success with you and your coach, Jean Fester? It's obviously quite a, a bond that you guys have on the field. Yeah, of course, we're like one big family. Um, I've known Jean a couple of years now. I've been training with him. I think this is my eighth year. So yeah, the, the relationship is there, the confidence is there, and we believe in each other, and I think that is very important. Have you tra changed any of your training regimes, your approach to races? Yeah, um, well, the basics every year stays the same. Um, we try and, and, and change little things here and there, but mainly the basics, it stays the same. If something works, you don't want to change it. Tell us what a day in your life is like. How does it, you wake up and then I presume it's onto the field? Yeah, well, I wake up in the morning, I'll have a cup of tea and so on. And then normally at 7.30, I'm out on the road doing my, my, um, my, my distance on the, on the road. From there on, it's a little bit in the gym, some core work and so on. Um, then I love to take an afternoon nap, at least an hour and a half, two hours. And then from there, it's back in the gym and back on the track doing some sessions. Who do you find will be your biggest competitors this year, going all starting with the indoors? Indoors, I'm not 100% sure who's going to run indoors um, this year. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about a Mohamed Aman, he's always a threat. And then you've got the two Polish athletes and all over. But if we look at outdoors, um, the 800 has been so competitive. There's so many athletes making their way up and already guys at the top. So there's at least a, a half a dozen, dozen guys I can mention. Yeah. Obviously, we spoke about this being a massive year. What are your goals going into Rio 2016? Short-term goal, of course, is World Champs this year. We want to have a good year at World Champs. Um, that's always good going into 2016. And long-term is, of course, uh, the Olympics in Rio. It's very important for us. Uh, everything we do uh, heads uh, to Rio 2016. Yeah, that's the big one. What would it mean for you to just represent your country at an Olympic Games or well, at this Olympic Games and even if even if the medal's not in the in the mind? Yeah of course it's always uh, Olympics is always special for any athlete um, it comes once in four years so that's I think the major one of, of, of all of them um, of course it's always proud to represent your country uh, Jean and I normally have this step we follow its first step second step and third step it's first step is running in the heat making the semi-final Second step is going from semi-final to final. And then third step is just running and trying to get in the final. And if you want in the final, um, we think anything is possible. Something that stood out for me, of course, the Proteas are gone for the Cricket World Cup. And something that stood out for me that Russell Domingo said that he approaches a tournament like a Cricket World Cup, like any other race that you're going to run or any other tourna uh, tournament or series that you face. Do you find that helps with the mental side of things? Exactly. If you, if, if you go to the Olympics and you think of it, how important it is for us, and it comes only once in four years, uh, it's not many athletes only have one or two in their lifetime. So you, you try and take it on as any other race and just, like I always say, just stick to the basics and, and do your best like any other race. I always say uh, our viewers want to know what our athletes are like off the field rather than on the field because they know what you can do on the field. Where did it all start? How did you get into athletics and just love the sport? Um, my sister is four years older than me. And she, my father used to train her. So at the age of six, seven, I was on the track. My father put on art cones for me and I was running up and down the track. So that's where it started off. Um, in, in primary school, I did all the sports uh, there was. And then once I got to high school, um, I had to make a decision and uh, thought athletics was the best one for me and uh, never looked back from there. Yeah. Do you find the love for the sport then is still here now? Yeah, of course. Um, it's, it's something, uh, once you get injured and you're out for a couple of months or maybe a year and a half like I was, you realise what it means to you. 
and athletics is not just it's 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 part of you. So that's for me is was very important to learn. Was it quite difficult to come back from the injury and just find that form again? Yeah, yeah it took me at least a year and a half just to get back to the way where I was. Uh, but it, I think after an injury, it makes you hungry to come back even harder and uh, realize what it means to be on the track every day, healthy and injury free. Growing up and, and having athletics in the blood, was it quite difficult to make the, the decision uh, to become a professional athlete? I mean, athletics used to always be our top medals at uh, big events and with funding and problems in the Federation, that seemed to have died down. Uh, true. Uh, luckily, I had a very supportive parents, especially my dad. He always supported me during injuries and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course a very supportive, supportive coach and friends and family. So yeah, it was difficult, uh, especially in a country where athletics is not really seen as a, as a professional sport. And uh, it's, it's, sometimes it's difficult. But uh, as I came to Poch as a first year, I never thought I would take it on professionally. But just it carried on and, and uh, having managers in Europe and getting into big races makes it worthwhile and from there on. What would you like to see become of the sport in South Africa? <laughs> I wanted to become bigger and, and better. Uh, at the moment, we, we have the Varsity Cup, but I think it's very good for athletics. But uh, any athlete that's not part of a Varsity doesn't have really much races to do. And uh, I think that at the moment should be, should be seen as a problem. What are your dreams and ambitions for the future? What would you still like to achieve? Oh, as much as I can. First of all, uh, Jean and I, we always say our first goal for the year is to stay injury-free. Uh, I think if we can stay injury-free, we at least have another couple of uh, five, six, seven, maybe eight years left. So, of course, like I said, short-term goal this year is, uh, of course, the world champs in Beijing and then Olympics in 2016. And then who knows, maybe 2020 again, all over again. Thank you very much for speaking to Thank us you. and we wish you all the best for this year. Thank you.